It's Chris Allingham with Virtual Web Revolver. In this video, I'm going to show you how to salt or dry brine a whole turkey. You know, we've been brining turkeys in a liquid solution for many years, and it does wonders to turkey and lots of other lean meat, but not everybody's convinced. In fact, there was a, a 2018 article in the New York Times by a very influential food writer who wrote sort of about the demise of wet brining and talked up salting or dry brining meat. And dry brining has become more popular in the last few years because quite frankly, um, you know, people are ready for a change in part, but also there are some advantages to dry brining. You know, you get um, some of the benefits of liquid brining, but without the hassle of making up the solution, finding a container that's big enough for the turkey, also a container that you can actually fit in your fridge and all the attendant kind of hassle that comes with wet brining. When you do a dry brine, you basically apply a salt mixture uh, either directly to the skin or as you'll see in this video, I'm gonna do it underneath the skin. You separate the skin from the turkey. You apply the salt under the skin. You let it rest in the refrigerator on a rimmed baking sheet pan for just 24 hours or up to 48 hours at the most. And then you go ahead and you cook your turkey any way you like, whether it's in the oven or whether it's in the Smoky Mountain cooker. The two processes work in different ways. Liquid brining carries salt, sugar, and other water-soluble flavors into the meat through uh, an osmotic process. Water actually flows into the, the meat, into the sort of the empty spaces between meat fibers. Uh, so you're actually adding moisture to the meat and you can weigh that difference when you do a, a wet brining process. For a dry brine, the salt actually sucks moisture out of the meat to the surface where it mixes with the salt and then some of that is absorbed back into the meat itself. So you get the salt and flavor inside the meat without adding any liquid. And so some people feel that that um, is a, a better process, particularly because it doesn't change the texture of the meat and make it as watery as liquid brining does. So let me show you how to do a dry brine on a whole turkey. I'll show you how to separate the skin from the flesh, how to get in there and get that salt applied, how much and in what quantities, and then we will fire up the Weber Smoky Mountain cooker and get that turkey on, and I'll show you the end result. Let's get started. This is a 12.69 pound Foster Farms fresh and natural young turkey. It is something I picked up at Costco. It's the perfect size for cooking in the 18 and a half inch Smoky Mountain cooker. I've removed it from the packaging and I am gonna do a little trimming. I removed that little bit of the tail, sometimes known as the Pope's nose. I know a lot of people think that's a delicacy. I don't particularly care for it, so I trimmed that right off. And now you can see here that I'm removing some of the excess fat and skin around the opening of the body cavity. Just Take off whatever makes sense to you. If you see anything that you don't think belongs, just snip it right off. I've already removed the neck from the body cavity and I've removed the giblets from the neck cavity. And here uh, there's some excess skin at the neck, so I'm just gonna take and snip that off as well with my kitchen shears. Now it's time to begin to loosen the skin. And the process of salting a turkey means that you will have to loosen the skin over the breast area on both sides and also over each thigh and each drumstick. Now there are no style points for doing this. I mean, you, you don't want to poke a hole in the skin if it's at all possible. If that does happen, it's not the end of the world. Just take your time as you do this. Um, I've found that, of course, having Slightly smaller hands is helpful. If you've got gigantic frying pan hands, you might want to assign somebody else to do this task. The trick is just simply to work your fingers underneath the skin all the way down the length of the breast from the, the connection up at the keeled bone at the top all the way down to the sides. You see I'm using a, a wooden spoon here, the handle of a wooden spoon, and I'm just working it all the way down to the end of the breast if I can. And then I'm using kind of a rolling action to help loosen up the, the more difficult parts. What you'll find is that the skin does not adhere to the breast meat uh, or the thigh meat uh, equally. Some areas of the skin 
disconnects very easily. Other areas, like you see here, a little bit more difficult. So now that I've made a big enough pocket, I'm gonna get my hand in there, really work it right up to the very top of the breast. Use my other hand to pull that skin back, hold it back while I get my hand in and go all the way down to the very end of the breast section, get that skin nice and loose. Now it's time to work on the thigh and the drumstick. I'm gonna go in with my wooden spoon right at the sort of middle section of the breast and try to find a way down into the thigh area. You notice it looks kind of difficult and then all of a sudden it just sort of pops right in there. You see that? So like I said, you know, just take your time. Some areas will feel very tight. Other areas will just loosen up very quickly. Um, I use that spoon to go most of the way down into the thigh. I'll catch that in just a second. Now I've come back across to the drumstick and I'm loosening the skin in that area as well. It looks like I'm about to poke a hole here. I should be careful. Again, it, just take your time and don't be too forceful. Now coming back to the, the lower part of the thigh, going all the way down to the end with that handle. And now I'm going to repeat this process on the other side of the turkey. I'm not going to waste your time showing you that because it's just a mirror image of what we already looked at. But again, starting up at the breast area, um, try to get a toe hold in there with the wooden spoon and then work my fingers in and work all the way down to the end of the breast and then do the drumstick as well as the thigh. Now, as you noticed in some of these earlier pictures, I have laid out my mise en of the salt and other things that I'm gonna be applying to this turkey. And um, just as reference, I am using diamond kosher salt here. Um, it measures um, differently than Morton's kosher salt or regular table salt. If you're using Morton's kosher salt, you'll want to use about 25% less. If you're using a regular table salt, you want to use about half these measurements. But you'll see here that I have one tablespoon of diamond kosher salt uh, for the, the body cavity. I've got one teaspoon for the left breast, one teaspoon for the right breast. I've got a half a teaspoon of salt for the left thigh and for the left drumstick. And then I will repeat that half teaspoon for the right thigh and the right drumstick. At the top of this picture, you'll see there's a larger bowl that contains a mixture that's gonna go on the skin of the turkey. One teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt, one teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper, and one teaspoon of baking powder. The baking powder is a tip from uh, Cook's Illustrated Magazine in America's Test Kitchen. It changes something about the chemistry of the skin, I guess it's the alkalinity of the skin, and causes it to crisp up and brown up more than if you don't have the baking powder. So um, again, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon pepper, one teaspoon baking powder, mix those together, and you'll see me applying that here shortly in the video. I'm gonna start by applying the salt inside the cavity. There are no style points here. It's just a matter of getting it in there evenly. I kind of tip the turkey up on his neck and I sprinkle part of it in and move it around, try to get it on the, on the top side of the body cavity as well as on the bottom side and on the side sides. And once I've got all that salt in there, I'll reach inside and I will just spread it around with my hands. It seems like an awful lot of salt, I know, but a lot of the salt is not really gonna make it into the meat. It is, um, it's gonna get lost in the cooking process, so don't worry about the one tablespoon. Now, I'm gonna apply salt now to the breast section. This again is one teaspoon of kosher salt. Now here I am salting the left side of the breast. You'll maybe get a better view this time. About a third of that salt on the end of my gloved hand, reach all the way down to the end of the breast and start to rub that around on all the surface under there. Also loosening that skin just a little bit more as I go. Another third of the salt, applying that evenly all over the breast meat. You wanna just get this as evenly coated as you can on the breast area. You're not worried about the outside at this point, just the meat itself. Again, it may seem like a lot of salt, but 
a lot of this is going to uh, you know, weep out of the turkey as it, as it sits overnight, and some of it will cook out as well. Now it's time to apply the salt to the drumstick. Here I just am pulling the skin back and I'm dropping that salt right in the pocket that I created. And I'm gonna reach in there with my fingers and just spread that around as best I can, pushing it down. The nice thing about the kosher salt is big grain, so you can really feel it in there. Even though you can't see it, you can feel where it is and you can push that around uh, all the way down in that pocket you created. Now here I'm gonna do the, the drumstick on the other side. You can see there's that pocket, put that, that salt right in there. Again, this is a, a half teaspoon for each of the drumsticks and each of the thighs, working it down to the bottom of the drumstick. Now we're gonna do the thighs, put that turkey up on its side. And I'm trying to find the location. There it is, <laughs> there's the pocket. Put all that salt on my fingers and reach down there around and behind the drumstick, drop it on the thigh. It's amazing how elastic that skin really is. You wouldn't think you could get your hand in there like that, but get my hand all the way down there onto the thigh with that half teaspoon of salt, and then repeating that process on the other side. You'll notice that, look how shiny the turkey is. The salt is already sort of causing this turkey to, to exude some water. That's what salt does when you apply it to turkey. Um, that's not oil. And remember the turkey was dried off before we started, so it's giving up some water just even as I go through the process here. Applying that salt to the last portion of the thigh and then get them squared up. You notice all that liquid on the all that liquid on the cutting board. Now time to go ahead and apply the salt, pepper, and baking powder mixture to the outside of the turkey. In retrospect, I probably should have sprinkled this from a little higher up in the air to get more even coverage, but just doing the best I can here. And again, no, you know, no real style points. You're just trying to get relatively even coverage on the breast, on the thigh, on the the drumstick as well. Here I'm turning it on to the side so I can expose that thigh and get some of the mixture on there and then give that a little rub to spread it out. And we'll apply a little bit to the front of the breast section as well. Now we'll tuck those wingtips back up underneath the turkey, get them out of the way. This guy looks like he lost a street fight. He doesn't look so great after you've manhandled him the way I have but we'll tie those drumsticks together. That gives you a little better shape. Um, trim off the excess twine. And then you'll notice that the skin's a little bit misformed over the breast area. So we're gonna take some toothpicks and pull that down to the cavity opening and just pin that skin in place so that it will cook up looking nice and neat. Even though it does look a little bit bruised for the effort here, it will cook up nice and look nice, I promise you. On the side, we have a little, little bit of tearing, so I'm gonna kind of patch it together, pull up one side, push down the other side, and pin those two sections right to the, to the rib section. So there's some of that liquid I mentioned to you. You know, you will get uh, quite a bit of liquid coming out of the turkey as a result of the salting process. Don't worry about that, that is normal. Uh, you'll also see um, a lot of liquid coming out in the, uh, the storage of the turkey in the refrigerator. We're gonna put it in there for 24 hours. You can do it up to 48 hours. I just do it for one day. Um, you'll see here that I've got the turkey in the refrigerator on a rim baking sheet pan, and I've put a clean kitchen towel in the bottom of that pan just to catch any of the extra liquid that would tend to accumulate there. Covered with plastic wrap uh, on a separate part of the shelf in the refrigerator. Leave that in there for 24 hours and it'll be ready to cook the next day. So here it is the next day. I removed the turkey from the refrigerator, just patting it dry with some paper towels on the outside surface, just to make sure everything's nice and dry. Now I'm gonna poke some holes in the skin to let the fat get out during the cooking process. I'm taking a sharp wooden skewer. I'm gonna make about 10 holes in the lower portion on each side of the breast. There's kind of a fatty deposit area there where we'll poke some holes. And then also at the bottom of the thigh, and you can see where there's kind of a wrinkly fatty area there. I'm gonna poke right into that spot, 
That'll let the fat drain out during the cooking process. Now it's time for a little bit of butter. Butter makes everything better. This is four tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted in the microwave. Just going to evenly coat the turkey on all the exterior surfaces. If you only have salted butter, you can do that, but we've got plenty of salt in this turkey as it is. So if you have unsalted, that's better. Okay, I've got that turkey in the house. I got it buttered up. Got some holes poked in it to let the fat drain out of the bottom area of the thigh and also the breast. Uh, I'm now outside. Let me show you my setup for cooking this turkey. So I've got two chimneys of Kingsford Original Charcoal ready to fire off. Uh, I've got my water pan foiled. There's no water in the pan. I've got that inside piece of foil lifted up off the bottom of the pan just a little bit so that the drippings from the turkey don't burn in that empty water pan. I've got two chunks of smoke wood. One of those is apple and one of those is cherry. I'll use a Weber fire starter to get this fire going and uh, we'll get a shot of how the coals look before I dump them into the cooker. Let's go ahead and get it fired up. Okay, this charcoal is ready to be dumped into the cooker. You'll notice that it's orange deep down inside and on top. You can see there are some flames coming out the top of the chimney and the charcoal at the top is just starting to show some signs of gray charring. I don't really want the top to get much more charred than this because that means with the bottom of the chimney is being totally consumed. So let me glove up and we'll dump this out and get the cooker set up. That's a good hot fire. That should give us 325 to 350, which is the temperature I'm looking for for this turkey. We'll let this just uh, burn off a little bit more, get this grade mashed over on the top, and then we'll get the turkey out here. So this charcoal is looking pretty good. Pretty much ashed over all over the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cooker assembled. Now let's put this turkey in place. Top cooking grate, right in the center. I'm not gonna baste this turkey. I'm not gonna turn this turkey during the cooking process. Sorry for the plane flying overhead. This should take about two and a half to three hours to cook at 325 to 350. And I'm gonna get the probe in here for the shuffle arm. Put this right in the thickest part of the breast. I'm looking at, uh, Again, 160 to 165. I think this is kind of a smallish turkey. I'm gonna go down vertically into the breast. Get the lid on. And now I'll put those wood chunks inside the cooker. Just gonna drop them right on top of the hot coals, right in the middle. And that's all the wood I'll have in there for the entire cooking session. Here you can see that my internal temp on the shuffle alarm is 40 degrees, and I've got a high alarm set of 160 degrees for the internal temperature. As for my lid thermometer, it shows about 290 degrees, so we're getting up very quickly to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, here's the big reveal. Let's take a look. Oh, beautiful looking turkey. Beautiful looking turkey, very happy with that. Take this probe out of the breast, set aside. I'm just gonna double check with my thermopin, see what's going on here in the breast. We got 164 in that spot. Let's go on the back side here. We've got 166 in the thigh. I'm gonna try, but I always have a hard time getting those measurements. This is 173, 174. So 
Remember, we're looking for 160, 165 in the breast, 170, 175 in the thigh. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So we do have a little splitting right here. This is where you recall, I tried to pin the skin up here. Um, looks like here's my toothpick. Skin just tightened up and broke. So we do have a little spot here where we don't have coverage of skin, but that's okay because I'm going to let this cool off. I'm gonna slice this up and put it in a disposable foil pan and take this to my parents' house for Thanksgiving. So no one will ever see this whole turkey as it is right here, but you get to see it. I think it looks great. And now just a quick peek down into the water pan. You can see that I have a lot of juices down there that have accumulated and they are not burned. And that is the result of putting that foil in the pan so it is suspended above the bottom of the pan so it does not get hot enough to burn. A lot of good juices down there if you want to make your own gravy. Well, I couldn't be happier with how this turkey turned out. I'm going to let it rest for 30 minutes and I'm going to carve it. We're going to take this to Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. We're hitting the road, so I'll carve it up, put it in a disposable aluminum pan. We'll reheat it up at our destination and it should make for part of a great meal on Thanksgiving day. I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate you very much. If you would please like and subscribe to my videos, it helps other people find them. And until next time, take care, everybody. Gobble, gobble.